Greetings everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm your host Captain Rye. In today's YouTube video I'm bringing back World of Warships after about a week of not uploading World of Warships. Still taking a break from playing World of Warships myself but finally getting back around to looking at all of the replays being sent to me. Thank you to my wonderful subscribers for doing that. In today's video this one was a replay sent to me a while back by Grozny Ivan. Yes, Ivan the Terrible back again, showing us what he can do in a cruiser. Yes, another cruiser game. Ivan is in the Tier 7 Premium British Cruiser, the HMS Belfast, also known as the HMS Payfast for oh so many reasons. Although, with the proposed smoke changes that are due to come, maybe not as OP maybe not as pay to win as the battle gets underway it's shatter its domination match mode and ivan is headed up to the a cap point he's got a destroyer out front of him very smart of that destroyer to get up there and push the a cap point this is actually a recommended location to go take when you spawn on this side of the map simply because the c cap point is a lot closer to the enemy lines and Really, most of the fight is going to be over the B cap point. And since B is really open and exposed, you can try and get up here, take the A cap point as quickly as possible, and then circle back around on the other side of the island. And hopefully avoid losing too many ships at the B cap point. Now as I've been push ups here into the A cap point, the enemy team's already secured the C cap point, one of the reasons I don't recommend going over there because it is so close to the enemy lines. And the enemy team is in the process of capping B. Nobody's challenging them at the B cap point, so they're gonna continue ticking up on that. Ivan has got himself a broadside Cleveland. Now he's firing the high explosive. This is one of the features that the Belfast gets, but he switched over to the armor piercing because he has a broadside Cleveland to shoot at. Cleveland said it all notoriously hard to hit and does have pretty decent armor when it's angled, so Ivan switches back over to the high explosive. Now, high explosive in a smoke screen, that's not very fair, and a lot of people really complained when that was originally the case with the British cruisers, which is why the British cruisers don't have high explosive. So why does the Belfast give it? Well, aside from being a premium, it sacrifices the heal consumable. But what it gets in the replacement is, of course, that high explosive, those six inch high explosive with inertia fuse, very, very dangerous if you want to use those. It gets a pretty decent hydro, and it also gets a radar. Tier seven radar, not too many of those cruisers have it. Now he's got a Pensacola pushing up here. He's set that Cleveland on fire a few times. The Cleveland continuing to burn down. I think he set the Pensacola on fire, but the Pensacola has turned broadside to him. So he switches back to the armor piercing, and that Pensacola not in very much of a hurry to turn away and angle against Grozny here, but that's going to cost him as triple Citadel secures Ivan his first kill of the game. Switches back over to the high explosive. That's one of the advantages to these British cruisers. Um, to the Belfast and to the Perth is that the reload time not that long so you can very quickly switch back and forth between the ammo types if you need to. Manages to secure his second kill. He probably would have killed that Cleveland anyway through fire but finishes him off anyway with those shots there just on his stern taking him to the bottom. Enemy team has secured the B cap point so they are in the points lead with two caps. This is going to be very, very important because them having those two caps means they're going to gain capture points at twice the rate. So even if Ivan's team manages to start killing enemy ships and kind of reset that point, they're going to have to kill more of the enemy team in order to balance out that point's difference. So at this point, what should be happening is there should be some chat engagement. If you can type into chat, or if you're in a division with people, start coordinating. Flag the capture point, push hard. You can see here on the mini-map, that's not happening. He's got a couple of ships in the back there. They're sailing away, they're angling away, trying to head towards the border. They're probably taking a lot of heat from various ships out there. But there's also a lot of ships that are just kind of hiding behind islands, and that's not very helpful to 
Ivan. Now Ivan pops his smoke screen because he's come out from the side of this island here and he is detected. But Friendly Destroyer popping his smoke screen as well. This is kind of one of those things where communication would have been nice. It would have been good if the Destroyer had offered to lay that smoke screen in the chant first so that Ivan didn't waste his or that the Destroyer didn't waste his. But as you can see, the Destroyer gets a little too close to somebody there and is detected as a result and does take some hits. And he's still taking hits there, but that ship that's shooting at him looks like it's shooting armor piercing. Probably a battleship is missing the Destroyer. But Ivan's team loses a Destroyer. That's going to mean that the enemy team now has a Destroyer advantage. And the enemy team has also managed to kill four of Ivan's team's ships, which means, again, going into that, having that dual cap, they are really, really up on points here. And that's going to really put a bind on the rest of the team to get up there and start pushing more aggressively, but it doesn't always have the f effect you want it to, and in many cases, teams see this and they start just giving up. And that's really unfortunate. So Ivan is continuing to put high explosive downrange onto these battleships. He's trying to set them on fire. The six inch high explosive, not the best for fire starting, but you've got 12 shots per full salvo and a very fast reload here in the Belfast. And this is why people call it the pay fast, why the OP fast and think it is horribly broken because look how quickly he can just pump out high explosive shells setting battleships on fire because battleships love being set on fire right switches over the armor piercing i think he was expecting that battleship to stay broadside and now he's got an enemy destroyer that has popped up fairly close he could probably cause some significant damage to him but that destroyer getting a little too close for comfort and torpedoes could be in the water so ivan goes ahead moves out of his smoke screen manages to nail that destroyer who turned broadside that destroyer knew he was detected too i'm sure but ivan manages to secure the kill there not much that destroyer could do he's focused on other ships at the particular moment now he gets more shots out there that battleship does sink but ivan doesn't claim the kill a little disappointing there as it would have been a very lovely kill to add to his tally in this game he switches over to the armor piercing because he's got a broadside furutaka in the distance there fires off a full salvo and let's take a look at what he's looking at up here. It looks like another cruiser. Yes, it's an emerald that's down there. So that's not going to have a smoke screen, I believe. And that's not going to have high explosive. So you can angle your ship reasonably well and start nailing that guy with high explosive and causing some significant damage. Emerald, very light cruiser. High explosive will actually citadel that ship. Ivan gets a couple of shots off at that Congo there. The Congo is AFK. That's really unfortunate for the enemy team because that AFK Congo could have really put a significant hurt on Ivan here, caused some serious problems. As you can see, the enemy team has managed to kill all three of Ivan's destroyers on his team. So they have two destroyers left. They have an absolute destroyer advantage. And Ivan is out in the backfield basically picking on this Congo and he's causing damage to him. He's trying to sink them, but without some additional support from his team, there's nothing that they can do. The enemy team has more ships, but they do keep losing. So Ivan's team does keep trying desperately to finish them off to get them down. But I just look at the points difference. It's like a 400 point difference because again, the enemy team has secured that second cap point and Ivan's team just didn't push. So the enemy team is back around. They've split up now. This is actually a good thing because it means that Ivan's team is concentrated around the A cap point. They can defend it more effectively. And if they're defending it effectively, they should be able to deal with those ships that are back down near where they spawned at. Ivan continuing to put out high explosive fire on this Congo. He's trying to set him on fire in multiple places. You saw that the first fire he set actually finally burned out. So that probably tells you that the Congo might be running maybe a fire flag or something. Possible commander skill, hard to tell, but is completely AFK. So this is effectively farming free damage. Manages to set him on fire again. Pops his hydroacoustic just to make sure there's no hidden torpedoes coming at him. And there are torpedoes coming at him. But they're fired from the Emerald. They're going to run out of steam well before they reach Ivan. 
and that emerald is closing in. This is very foolish of the emerald here, because you're going up against him. Belfast. He's got better armor than you, and he's got more guns than you, so he manages to Citadel the Emerald. Big surprise there. Finishes him off, earns a Witherer for burning down this Congo. Now, the other thing that the Belfast doesn't get, aside from a heal compared to British cruisers, it doesn't get torpedoes. If it had torpedoes, high explosive, a heal, radar, hydro, if it had all of that, it would be way, way overpowered. Almost like the Perth, actually. The Perth gets torpedoes, but doesn't have radar. Of course, it is a tier 6 cruiser. And the Perth doesn't get a heal, too, so there is that. Ivan manages to secure the kill on the Congo through fire, because those last shells shattered there, earning himself an arsonist and his confederate and his Kraken Unleashed. So he's got Confederate High Caliber Witherer, Kraken Unleashed, Arsonist. And now there are just two enemy ships left, and they're both destroyers. This is led thanks to this friendly Cleveland up here, who has also surprisingly not taken any damage from the enemy team. How that was the case, I just do not know. Has managed to secure the B cap point. So now Ivan's team can finally start gaining points, but you see the enemy team still gaining points down there with the C cap point, and they have two destroyers left. Really, all these two destroyers need to do, run up, secure the A cap point, and once they secure the A cap point, basically just stay alive for the rest of the game. That's all they have to do to win it. They're way up on points. There's not a lot of time left. There's still a significant amount of time, but we're talking about destroyer players dealing with two cruisers, not ships you as a destroyer captain want to deal with. A Cleveland, well, he doesn't have radar. He might not have hydro if he's running the AA consumable. A lot of U.S. cruiser captains do. So as long as you can keep your distance from the Cleveland, you might be able to get some stealth torps off at him, finish him off, but you're probably not going to be able to sink him, especially if he's full strength like he is. The other cruiser here, obviously, Ivan in the Belfast, it has that radar. You don't know if he's still using that radar. He could be. It's dangerous. Now, Ivan's pushing up towards the A cap point again because it's being capped by a destroyer, and he's spotted. So he knows, based on his detection range, that it's obviously the enemy destroyer, but it's within his radar range. So he pops his radar, gets that out there, and it's the enemy Fabuki. This Fabuki is unfortunate enough to have strayed a little too close and now Ivan is going to go ahead and continue to try and wreck him. But you see here, Fubuki running away. Radar's timed out. Very smart destroyer. He turned. He didn't try to continue to engage. And he's just trying to run away. So those shots end up missing completely. But we know he's still obviously within the detection range of Ivan right now. Now... Ivan's not going to continue shooting. He's going to let his concealment drop back, and that's going to tell you how far away that destroyer is and if the other destroyer has come back around. So he does. He's still detected, obviously, and then that destroyer is obviously not running concealment expert because he pops up yet again. Ivan gets his hydro up just in case that Fubuki has got torpedoes out at him, and yes, there are those torpedoes. So Ivan's going to go full speed ahead. He's going to try and avoid them completely. He is going to, fortunately, outrun them. Only two sets there. Surprised that it's possible maybe Ivan managed to knock out the other set there. That Fabuki trying now to run away, but he's not having any, any luck as he gets more torpedoes tubes knocked out. He's trying to get that distance, but the Fabuki isn't that fast. In fact, compared to the Belfast, I think the same speed. So, very low health there. His engine's knocked out. He's not going to survive this engagement. Friendly Cleveland is capping the C cap point. And so now, that just leaves one destroyer left. And he's all the way up at the A cap point. But he could be anywhere at this point. And now with the B and C cap points secured, really, their team just needs to focus on defending the B cap point. So that Cleveland needs to come back, get up to the B cap point, and basically just stay there. The only way now this last destroyer can win is if he sinks one of the two ships or captures the B cap point. There's still plenty of time, and now the scores are very, very close. 
Now, Ivan is going to go ahead. He's going to push up here to the A cap point. Why risk letting the enemy continue to gain points? You're in the points lead. You have a ship's advantage. You have a ship class advantage compared to this destroyer. And this destroyer, there's not much that he can do here against you. He could lay an ambush. Now, Ivan does something very smart here. He fires his guns to see if the destroyer can see him. That'll tell him that that destroyer, obviously, as he's detected here, has direct line of sight to him. Now, as he passes between the two islands here, notice he's still detected. So that tells you that that destroyer has a direct line of sight to him in this passage. So he could be directly in front, or he could be off down that passage. It's hard to tell. This could be very dangerous because that means there could be torpedoes in the water. But the last ship, I do believe, is a Farragut, which means those are going to be short range, so he's got to do ambush tactics. But notice, he drops off detectability, so we know exactly where that destroyer is, what channel he was down with that direct line of sight. Ivan pings it on the map, alerting the Cleveland, that that is exactly where that destroyer is more than likely to be, which tells us that destroyer probably headed toward the B cap point. So you can see there on the mini map, the Cleveland heading back to the B cap point. Again, smart Cleveland player. Now, as Ivan comes around here, he's spotted, he's detected. And again, that tells you exactly how far away that destroyer is. Radar range just inside there. There are torpedoes there. So that could have been a lucky torpedo shot for this Farragut. Ivan continuing to fire off rounds here, trying to get him. The Cleveland looks like he's firing armor piercing, doesn't manage to connect with him. Ivan barely manages to connect, but you'll notice that Farragut manages to hit a speed boost. He just runs away. He does exactly what you should do if you're facing a radar cruiser and they use radar. Just turn around, run as far the opposite direction as you can. Eventually, you will either outrange their radar or you will outlast their radar, and then you can turn around and you can come back here. But the Farragut doesn't have much more concealment than Ivan in his Belfast. You can see the concealment range there, pretty small, so definitely running the concealment expert on his captain. Obviously, can't fit the concealment module because it's a tier 7 ship and not a tier 8 ship. Now, we know where this destroyer was last seen, but... We don't know where he currently is. So Ivan takes a speculative shot again. He fires off his gun, just kind of at nothing, to expand the gun bloom to see if he's detected. Because again, that tells him if that destroyer has direct line of sight, and he doesn't. So that destroyer is likely back up behind one of those islands up there. He's gone into concealment behind those islands. So we know he's back up there, but we don't know where. And we don't know which island yet. There, though, he pops up. There's the destroyer pops up here. He's close enough. He's firing at the Cleveland. That is a gutsy move. That is a bold move, Cotton. We will see if this pans out for him. Cleveland starts opening fire. Does connect again, though. The Cleveland firing armor piercing at a bow on Farragut. That is a bold move, Cotton, and I don't think it's going to work out very well for him. And, of course, he's overshooting him as that Farragut has his speed boost and just basically royally pushing into him. But battle's over. Their team wins on points. Look at that, 189,000 damage done in that game. Six kills taken out there. Again, Arsonist Confederate, Kraken Unleashed, Wither, and High Caliber. A full base cap and two base assists there for Ivan. That's going to easily put him top of the team for XP earn, as you expect. Ivan did a lot of carrying in this game, just as far as picking targets he knew he could kill and keeping up relentless withering fire. They're top of the team at 2,900 base XP, well above the next nearest guy on his team, and well above anybody on the enemy team there. Anyway, that's it for today's video, folks. If you like the video, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment down below. If you'd like to get semi-regular channel news and updates, as well as my live streaming schedule for the week, you can do so by liking and following me on Facebook for now. If you've got a replay like this one that you'd like to see featured on my channel, you can send it to my email. If you'd like to help support me in the channel, and I highly encourage you to do so, thanks to the great Adpocalypse, you can do so by becoming my supporter on Patreon. Patreon supporters will receive additional perks as well as naming rights in some of my Let's Plays. If you'd like to watch me play various games live, you can do so by following me on Twitch. You can find the links for all of those in the video description down below. And as always, I'll see you next time. This is Captain Rye, signing off.